Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? Oh, mon dieu. Yes, everybody's here. You are all anxious to do the reindeer, aren't you? I just thought of... Uh, well, yeah, a few minutes. I'm sorry. I just realized that uh, not everybody might have the colors that are needed. So I thought of actually showing you how to use just white and uh, burnt under to do all the colors that you need. Tu dois, uh, Brigitte, tu dois faire le reload sur la page. Recharge la, la page. Donc, j'ai dit que j'ai pensé que c'était mieux de vous montrer à tous, si vous n'avez pas tous les, toutes les couleurs, comment faire les couleurs seulement en utilisant le blanc et euh, l'ombre brûlée. So, I'm going to have the white and then I have some burnt amber. And, of course, I I keep forgetting when my machines are on the other setting. Oh, goodness. So, we are going to have the burnt amber and the white, right? And remember, both of them on the same thickness. Hi, Tina. Hi, Cecile. Hi, Manny. Hi, Brigitte. And who else is here? Lilou, Kari, Deborah, Leona, Deborah. Hi, everybody. Okay, so I'm going to take one and another one. If you are okay with the the burnt amber color but as a general idea the reindeer are just a tad lighter okay so what we are going to do actually is to do a one on white white and burnt amber and then on this one let me actually get it to do some beige now if you have already have brown and uh like a cowboy souffle and uh latte cowboy that would be just fine but uh, on the other one to do the beige i'm going to actually get one part white and a quarter of burnt amber so i'm going to very quick mix them it doesn't take a long time but you should use the burnt amber not another uh, color of brown because other colors of brown might have uh, some greenish tints of course you can do it with just red and green if you don't have brown at all but uh, depending on the color of your red and your green, you'll have to vary the proportion between the red and the green. So here you go. I got my beige. And let me get my proper brown. I'm almost there. C'est du blanc, c'est du blanc, Brigitte. Donc, euh, tu prends une, une part blanc et un, un uh, quart de uh, marron. Et ensuite, pour le marron, la couleur des, des cerveaux, je ne sais pas comment, des cerfs, je ne sais pas comment on appelle les reindeer en français. Si Cécile, Cécile peut-être que tu me, peux m'aider. Parce que le 
l'ombre brûlée est un peu trop foncée pour la couleur de serre. Hi Brenda. Okay, and here's my brown. Now you can see that it's a much lighter brown than the burnt amber. And that is way too dark for a reindeer. So let me put them aside because we will need a little bit of white and a little bit of brown as well. And let me grab the wire. Because remember, I told you that you will need wire. Now, depending on the type of wire you have, I am going to grab some uh, thin wire. This is a 24 gauge. And if you have a 24, you will have to double it. Bonjour, Sylvie. So now you'll have to decide about how big you want to do your reindeer. I am going to make it about this big even if probably if I would make an ornament, I would make it about this big. But I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so everybody can see what I'm talking about. And it is a good idea if you have never done something like this to kind of get yourself, you know, like a piece of paper and a pen to get an idea of the dimensions. So I would go pretty much, this would be the body, these would be the legs, trying to make sure that you can see what I'm doing here. Then this would be the head. Okay, so I'm going to try, of course, the legs have to go a little bit lower. So this would be the armature, pretty much. And we will do the uh, antlers as well. We oui, Bridget. Oui. Hi Teresa. How's that? Tigers are coming along. So I'm going to do this part a little bit thicker. I'm getting my wire in four because it's a 24 gauge and most people have a 22 or a 24 laying around. They don't have a thicker one. So that's why I picked this one up but you will still need one that would be you need your armature a little bit thicker okay i'm going to do the same for the legs so i'm going to need about four times this amount plus a little bit to wrap And of course, you can make the whole thing out of clay, but I'm going to tell you two things. Number one, you're going to use a horrible amount of clay. And uh, number two, okay, this was supposed to be twice that. Uh, and number two, it will crack, most likely. It will crack because when you have very thick clay, it has the tendency to bonsoir Karin, to crack as it um, cools off because the um, outer area of the clay, of course, will cool off faster and will retract, will uh, contract compared to the clay that's inside. So you will get cracks. The only way that you might avoid cracks is to, as soon as your oven dings, to take the thing out and just dunk it into ice water, because that way you'll make all the clay cool off at the same rate, pretty much, closer. So yeah, it looks like I have a whole bunch of wire here, but that's how we start. 
Euh, vous pouvez utiliser du fil d'aluminium plus épais si vous avez, mais moi j'ai pris du fin, j'ai de l'épais. Mais la plupart de, de gens ont seulement de, de fil pour les bijoux, donc euh, il serait de, du fil très fin. Donc c'est ce que j'utilise. So, I have the body, front legs, back legs, and I need one more for the head, for now. And then we will do the um, antlers here in a minute. And this will be the head. Now, we are going to build a frame for our reindeer. So here I'm going to have pretty much something like this. Bending this, then I will take one of the legs, pretty much. And remember I told you that you need to have what else? Masking tape. And here comes the first layer of masking tape. Regular tape will not work because it obviously it melts in the uh, in the oven. You can give it a red nose if you want. I bet. So let's just fix the, and don't worry about making a very tidy thing because this will be covered anyway. What you're interested in right now is to have the legs not slide up and down. And let's do the same thing for the back legs. Donc vous prenez de, uh, de la scotch tape en, en uh, papier, pas d'autre uh, scotch tape parce qu'elle va... Uh, être, oh Cécile, melted by the heat. Et vous fixez le, le fil en aluminium pour qu'il ne pas bouge, pour qu'il ne bouge pas. And let's do the same thing with the back legs armature. So, Measuring, it should be about here. Yes, we have this, but remember, it's got a tail, right? And let's work this a little bit like this. And then fix it in place with a little bit of masking tape. I know, it looks crazy, doesn't it? No. It's going to be pretty much something like this. Actually, it's like this. Now let's twist these a little bit so we can get a proper height and length. You don't have to go very, very fine and very, very equal. Um, no, because some, I mean, I used to use it before, but um, you'll see there's a different thing here going on. It's not, uh, number one, the more modern floral wire is, co wire is covered in a plastic type cloth. So that doesn't work. But right now you just want to fix them in place, not more, not less. For the next uh, step. Now I'm not putting on the head yet, but let's get the length. 
so it would be this much let's make a little loop here and cut the excess the same for the other leg try to make them equal that is fairly important if you are going to ever uh, set your reindeer to stand up not to just be hanging and the same thing with the back legs so you see i'm getting my measurement then I kind of loop it. Of course, you can use a plier if you cannot do this by hand. And do the same thing on the other leg. Okay, now I'm going to throw these because I don't want them laying around and getting in. And I need to get something out of the oven. I'll be back in one second. Okay, I am back. Now... Now comes the aluminum foil. Try and cut, cut some strips out of it. I'm sure that everybody has a craft, a pair of craft scissors that, sorry for the noise, that are pretty much busted and that you use for various for cutting various things that new, normally dull the scissors. N'utilisez uh, pas une paire de bon... Uh, oh God, I'm so bad about French today. Utilisez uh, un paire de ciseaux qui n'est pas uh, très bon. La plupart de, des artistes sont toujours une paire de ciseaux qui est déjà foutu. Donc, utilisez ça. Parce que le, le papier aluminum complètement abîme les ciseaux. Now, we are going to take this. Remember, we are not doing the head right now. We are going to do the head after we do uh, the first one, the first bacon. And now try to build a little bit of, first, get your legs in position the way they would be so you need to space them a little bit in a u shape because think how the skeleton of the reindeer would be you'd have the hips right and then let's build a little bit of body with the aluminum foil You will have to pack the aluminum foil really good. And this is how actually the armature for art dolls is made as well. Uh, and the aluminum foil has actually a double um, use. Not only it saves on clay, but uh, also a triple use. Also, uh, when it gets hot, it will ensure that the clay inside, from the inside, will bake evenly, the same as the clay on the outside. It's kind of like when you insert in a turkey an empty beer can that will heat up and um, cook the turkey from the inside too. And uh, the third thing is that it will avoid cracking because you will uh, have the aluminum foil. Remember, when you take things out of the oven, it cools off very fast. So uh, even if the clay on the outside cools off faster than what would be the clay on the inside, the aluminum foil inside cools off at about the same rate as the uh, wrapping clay. 
And now let me say that in French. Uh, on utilise uh, la feuille de aluminium pour trois uh, choses. Um, and à propos, c'est exactement comme ça qu'on fait les armatures pour les poupées d'art. Uh, la feuille d'aluminium, uh, premièrement, uh, va économiser sur uh, la quantité de pâte que vous utilisez, bien sûr. Euh, deuxièmement, elle va assurer euh, que la pâte qui est à l'intérieur va être euh, cuite euh, très bien, de même que la pâte qui est à l'extérieur. Et troisièmement, parce que la feuille aluminium euh, refroidit assez vite, pensez euh, quand vous sortez de, du four euh, un pot qui est couvert en pâte aluminium, comme, comme la, la en feuille aluminium, comme la feuille euh, se refroidit assez vite. Euh, donc, euh, le, la pâte qui est dedans va refroidir, la pâte qui est au dehors va refroidir et, euh, et absolument euh, la même euh, vitesse en le même temps que la feuille d'aluminium, donc il ne va pas euh, craquer. And now I think that I have enough body for this. Now, you have to do it very, very, very packed. No soft stuff. And here comes the masking tape again. Cécile, tu peux m'aider si vous... Si tu peux, si tu vois que j'ai omis quelque chose. So now, pull the aluminum sheet very, very tightly with your masking tape. And the masking tape has actually, again, a double uh, use here. Not only um, it will make, it holds together the aluminum foil very packed, but it will assure that the clay sticks on a fairly flat surface and sticks very well because if you have the aluminum foil, the aluminum foil has all kinds of wrinkles and cracks, right? So uh, it will be a little bit harder to make a nice and uh, smooth surface on directly on an aluminum foil. So at this point, make sure that you have a very nicely packed aluminum foil all tight in the masking tape. And I still have the butt. Where's my end? And let's do the bot as well. And now we have a fairly good, tight, tightly packed body. Now let's put some masking tape around the wires as well. What? Quoi? Ah, bonjour. I'm sorry, Cecile. Uh, let me see, apprendre quoi. Ah, filmer. The blue, you, you talk about the painter's tape? Yeah, that works too. If it's the paper kind, that works too. I mean, this you can find it in white, you can find it in blue. It's the, the masking tape that you put when you, when you paint. 
it's also called a painter's tape. Now, let's put first some of this tape on the wire of the legs. And this has a very um, big importance because generally speaking, if you put clay directly on wire, it's going to slide around. And that's one of the reasons why we made the, the loops at the end. But that's why you do always have to make loops whenever you insert wire in the polymer clay because otherwise it will slide around. Maintenant, je mets de, de, de la un scotch en papier uh, sur les pieds aussi parce que si vous mettez de la pâte directement, directement sur le fil de cuivre ou aluminium, uh, la pâte uh, va commencer à bouger. Uh, C'est pourquoi... Toujours quand on fait insérer un, un fil de cuivre ou d'aluminium dans un bijou, on doit toujours faire un petit anneau ou un petit uh, courbe pour empêcher la pâte de, de bouger. Parce que sinon, le, le fil de cuivre ou d'aluminium va uh, sortir de la pâte. Oui, c'est un... Comment c'est ce qu'on dit? Hold on, let me... Attendez, je vais regarder dans le dictionnaire. Un reine. Non, oh, ça c'est stupide. J'ai un de ces très blancs moments parce que vous savez que mon, mon langage maternel, c'est le roumain. Et <rire> en roumain, on appelle ça une reine. <rire> Mais je ne pouvais pas me rappeler comment est-ce qu'on dit en français. Quand je vous dis que mon... Ça, c'est parce que j'ai fait la chémothérapie et ça affecte beaucoup le... La mémoire, euh, comment est-ce qu'on appelle ça? La mémoire euh, proche, pas la, le, la mémoire des choses qui ont, qui ont passé il y a longtemps, mais la mémoire de... Euh, un peu comme le Alzheimer. Et ça, actuel, euh, ça s'appelle le... Euh, just a second. Le brouillard de Kémon, le euh, cerveau brouillard, le brouillard du, du cerveau fait par, euh, causé par la chimiothérapie. Mais c'est un fait très connu et ça peut s'en aller dans une année ou deux, mais ça peut rester pour un très longtemps. Maintenant, je suis bien mieux que j'étais avant, mais j'ai encore des moments où je ne me rappelle pas des, des mots. Et non, j'ai fait, fait un, euh, un scan de, de la cervelle et c'est seulement la chimo, c'est pas d'autre chose, heureusement. Mémoire immédiate, merci. Merci, Régine. Oui, ça affecte la mémoire immédiate et le, euh, parfois trouver ces mots. C'est pour ce que j'ai dit que ça s'appelle un, euh, un cerveau, la cervelle brouillée. C'est comme un brouillard. Et j'ai des, des jours qui sont mieux, des jours qui ne sont pas. Mais vraiment, euh, je ne peux pas faire... Euh, j'étais avant, j'étais euh, capable de faire quelque, beaucoup de choses, multiples choses dans, la, dans le même temps. Et maintenant, je ne peux pas. Et... Quand je dois parler dans deux langages différents, j'ai des problèmes à me rappeler des, des mots. Et ça ne devait pas se passer parce que le français a été comme mon deuxième langage maternel. J'ai commencé à apprendre le français quand j'étais euh, trois années d'âge. Donc... 
Now try and make your little reindeer stand up properly. Yeah, you'll have to work a little bit with those little loops at the ends. And there we go. It stands up without ways out of on the ASA. I'll see. Let me see if you can. I'm going to move the camera so you can see it better from the side. Just to give you. So this is how it's supposed to look. Okay, make sure that it sits. It doesn't have with the to sit with the legs equal because it can have a leg a little bit more to the side or it can be running or something. But this is how you position. When you make a sculpture, this is how you position. And you can, for example, position, let's say this would be a dog, okay? And you want the dog to be sitting. Then you remember we have the skeleton here. So we will bring the, the hip joint up and to make the dog sit and of course we can i'm not going to bend too much but pretty much this is how you make the dog sit je dis que c'est comme c'est comme ça qu'on fait les armatures si vous faites des sculptures d'animaux c'est comme ça que vous les posez pour avoir une pose naturelle vous devez toujours penser que Ça, ce sont les os du euh, squelette. Et toujours suivez où euh, l'articulation naturelle serait. Donc, quand vous faites votre reine, pensez que ça, ce sont les, les os des articulations. Et moi, j'ai un deux qui n'est pas comme ça. Mais prenez garde que il serait dans une posture naturelle. You know what? <laughs> yeah, but uh, you can you can always um, you know rearrange it so you would have a proper uh, position. Okay. I know I had some scrap paper. There we go. Now I'm going to just take some scrap clay. I forgot to put that in the in the necessary. And I'm going to actually pass it on the thinnest setting. So I can start wrapping the base creating the base and you can also a good idea is to place some liquid clay or bacon bond on the masking tape that ensures the clay would adhere better do you see better from the side or uh, from above so i know how to hold the camera Oui, Sylvie, c'est une préparation, mais euh, si tu fais une sculpture qui est euh, plus grande qu'un petit charme, euh, sinon, si tu ne prépares pas tout ça, elle va craquer. C'est ce que j'ai dit euh, au début, que si vous faites des, des sculptures qui, sont, qui ont beaucoup de pâtes, euh, sans faire une armature, <coughs> la sculpture va craquer quand elle refroidit, parce que la pâte au-dessus... <coughs> Ne, ne devient froide, devient froide plus euh, vite que euh, la pâte qui a cuit dedans. Elle commence à se contracter, donc elle va craquer. Tu sais que tu, tu, tu as dit que, que tu veux faire de la sculpture. Tu dois apprendre comment faire tout ça si tu ne veux pas avoir des sculptures craquées. 
spécialement quand il s'agit de, de poupées d'art. Parce qu'avec cela, tu travailles pour quelques journées sur une seule poupée, et donc si tu la cuis, elle craque, tu as foutu tout, tout ton travail. So you like better the tell me exactly which uh, which camera position is the best. Dites moi quelle uh, position de caméra est uh, meilleure pour vous si je uh, maintiens le la caméra comme ça ou si je le la ramène uh, de nouveau en haut. Oh, I forgot to put a little bit of tape here. So let me grab this. J'ai oublié de mettre un peu de bande adhésive ici. I forgot to take the little tail. We don't want the tail to come off, do we? Okay, let me get it up then. No, this position is better. You can see better what I'm doing. So whatever you use for um, making the No, this is scrap clay, Tina. I'm not going to use good clay to cover the masking tape. Whatever scrap clay you have is fine. And don't go beyond the masking tape on the neck. Leave some of it open. So now I'm going to get the legs. So this is just to make my base of clay and uh, the base of sculpting. And then I will cover it up with the regular final color clay. And you can use just white clay and then paint it, you know, if you really want. So don't worry if it's all stripy and not looking terrific right now because right now all I'm doing is wrapping. Donc, uh, ça ne montre pas très bien maintenant, mais ce que je fais maintenant, c'est seulement d'envelopper uh, l'armature dans uh, de la, du pâte burk. Donc, la couleur du pâte burk n'importe pas. Je vais pas utiliser tout ce, tout ce bon uh, pâte pour faire la base. Yeah, it's a mutant reindeer. But you know, you can make the reindeer however you want it colored. I mean, for goodness sakes, it's Christmas. You can make it in patchwork if you want. You can make it played. Donc, vous pouvez faire le, le reine dans toutes les couleurs que vous voulez, après tout. Vous savez, parce que c'est le Noël, c'est vous faites absolument les couleurs que vous voulez. Mais très important est d'avoir tout ce qui est en dessous très bien euh, fait. Maintenant, je vais vous dire quelque chose. J'ai laissé exprès sur la... Euh, la pâte frontale droite, j'ai euh, l'adhésif, la, le papier adhésif pas très bien enroulé pour que vous voyez ce que euh, va euh, être si vous n'enroulez ne, pas et vous ne comprenez. Comp 
Oh, mon Dieu. Compact. Compacté, pas très bien. Euh, le papier adhésif et la, la pâte. Donc, so I've left on the, actually, I left on the uh, front right uh, leg the masking tape not very well packed so i can show you what happens if you don't pack it tightly okay now where do i need to place more i need to place more around the chest area because obviously it will have a deeper chest than this right and a little bit in the front because he's going to be a deeper chest little guy. And now I can start smoothing up the whole concoction. Now, if I were to wrap it with translucent, yeah, the color that I'm using would be important. But uh, as I'm wrapping it with brown, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, they could, the Braha. And again, we are talking about a little Christmas ornament. We are not going to go very much into the perfect realistic detail, right? It's supposed to be something fun and easy to make, relatively easy. But as I promised to show you how to start sculpting stuff, this is one of the sculpting things. Make sure that your clay is well packed on top of the masking tape. And now let's start covering it up. I am going to take a slice of the beige. And see, I have about a finger's width. And I'm going to place some here. and bring it up all the way under the tail now don't start with if it's a boy or a girl we are making a gender, gender neutral. <laughs> well, tell him that if I want to make a reindeer blue, I'm going to make a reindeer blue. It's all how the sculptor sees the world. Okay. Now, obviously, we need to get here just a pinch of white. It's going to be continued higher but we will need a little bit of white here and actually I need a little bit more of the uh, scrap clay I know I have a, a ton of scrap clay somewhere here yes everybody does okay this is more greenish so we're gonna have some green on the reindeer as well But always make your scrap into the thinnest sh setting and pretty much in a strip. I'm going to wrap it around the little tail.
yeah, it's a gender neutral. I don't want to have any kind of, you know, I get all the weirdest comments and messages. So I don't want to be accused of assuming the gender of the, but, you know, I may get that. Did you just assume the gender of the train gear? Yeah, yeah, I did. But I don't want to go into that right now. <laughs> I mean, I swear. People these days. Okay, now cut like a triangle of the white on the thinner setting. Maintenant, couper un triangle du, du blanc. Et mettez-le ici. Okay, and it's just a pinch more white. And then pretty much feather the, the white over the beige. This is called feathering. When you gently bring one layer of clay over the other one to blend it. Okay, now let's use our light brown. You can place some beige here too, but it's not really necessary. Generally, their legs are pretty much the same color. And I'm going to wrap it in the brown. And when you get here, you can just use your fingers and wrap out the extra. It's okay if you wrap too much because you can always add some more. Just make sure that you don't get air bubbles underneath. And here we don't want to get this high. We're going to go about this much. And again, feather the clay here. On both sides, the brown over the beige. And of course, you can work, you know, to make all the muscles and all that if you want to go realistic. But now we are just going to go for a quick and easy Christmas ornament, as I said. Now let's wrap the legs. Might have to make more of this brown because I only made two squares. I need to catch up with what's going on in chat because you guys are something else. <laughs> yes. So always feather each new piece of clay you're using to cover up. Feather it to smooth the wherever the clay is joining the other clay.
and see how it comes along. As I said, we are making it pretty much like a stuffed toy at this point. Tu dois faire beaucoup de... Tu dois exercer beaucoup, Sylvie, jusqu'à ce que tu apprennes les proportions. So now this is my faulty leg. Remember that I did not compact the masking tape on it properly. Okay, let me grab some more burnt umber. And see, that's the deal. If you have the measured, it doesn't matter if you make, if you run out and make another batch later, because if you use the exact same proportions, you'll get the exact same color. So it will not be different than the rest of the body. It's a lot of artists, uh, sometimes they actually make a kind of micro skeleton. And they even start for the, you know, very realistic dolls. Uh, they actually start with a real skeleton and the real uh, skull in which they uh, arrange the features. And I think a lot of artists, the great artists, the structure of the polymer, they start. Uh, actuellement, euh, en commençant par un squelette avec le crâne et tout ça, et, euh, 
c'est ce qu'ils ce qu sculptent premièrement et ensuite ils il commencent à, le, à mettre de, de la chair sur la poupée. So again, feather nicely the to blend. And you can find at this point, I know that you can even find the uh, already made skeletons and armatures for dolls that you don't have to worry of making them yourself, you can buy them already made. Il y a, à ce moment, on peut uh, trouver dans des boutiques de d'art des squelettes déjà faits ou des armatures déjà faites pour des poupées, uh, généralement pour des poupées humaines, mais on peut les trouver déjà faites pour ne pas avoir de les travailler vous-même. And the last leg. No, 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 not reborn dolls. Just regular. I'll try and find some. I know that I've even seen them at Hobby Lobby, the doll armatures. The, the, the general uh, dimension for the art, polymer clay art dolls is between a seven and eight and a half inches tall for a human doll. And those, I think they are for eight inches dolls. And that you go to a scale to one to eight on everything that you're making. But they are generally um, art doll artists that sometimes sell all this stuff and you can find a lot of tutorials on that. And form the hoof, form the little hoof here. Now we got to do two things. Uh, you can wrap the hoof in black, but um, I'd rather just paint it because it's easier than having to get everything, you know, all smoothed out. We are talking about making something real quick and easy. So just shape it, make sure that it's shaped properly and rounded a little bit. And the other thing that you want to do is here at the tail. 
Let's make a few fair lines. I know I smudged a little bit of brown there. It's got a dirty tail. Okay. Now let's go ahead and bake this. And while it bakes, we will be doing the antlers. And that we will be inserting in the, when we make the head. Generally speaking, always try to bake twice because you don't want to mess up the details of the first bake that you did. So it should pretty much look like this. Remember, we are making something that would look kind of like a stuffed toy. So. Okay. Okay. Let me go put it in the oven. Okay. Sorry, somebody had to go outside. Okay, now we will need, remember, we still have the head wire, but besides that, we are going to need two more pieces. And let's go for about, I don't know how much it is, about 10 inches for each antler. This is an old spool of wire. Maintenant, pendant que le corps est en train de cuire, on va faire d'abord les dictionary. Les bois du Rennes. Donc, on va prendre environ euh, 25 cm de fil. And leave a circle here. It's important. Again, a little loop at the end. And keep wrapping. We are not going to make many branches. And 
and bring this down. And I'll bring it up again. Bend, twist, and finish twisting. And we have a reindeer antler, pretty much. Now let's make the second one. So again, this time I'm going to explain. Yeah, probably. Donc, vous pliez en deux, ensuite laissez un petit, une petite boucle. And try to go by the one you've already made. So, pretty much here. Okay, these weren't supposed to be twisted here. Pretty much here, you bend one of them for the same length, bring it back, twist, make a little bend in the front and bring it back down, in the, in the end and bring it back down, and keep twisting up. And then check here. So keep twisting. So you go first and make the longest one, okay? And then you come back down, twist till you get two this one here bend and keep twisting and you have your second antler and now of course the next thing we do no oh, thank you carrie of course we need to wrap this in masking tape And you'll just have to keep breaking the masking tape to get the main. And this is why it's a great thing that the masking tape is paper because it's very easily broken by hand. and make sure that your masking tape is well wrapped around and packed. Ah, crois-moi, le premier que j'ai fait a été terrible aussi. Donc, Il fait beaucoup de travail pour arriver à faire les, à les faire sans faute. Je crois que j'ai pas fait, j'ai pas fait un dans plus de 15 ans. I was saying that they should believe me. Cecile was saying that probably the first one she will make will look horrible, and I told her that the first one I made looked horrible. 
it takes a little bit of work and practice until you get them right. And I think I didn't make one in at least 15 years. So I'm not saying that mine is going to be super duper. But again, we are going for the look of a stuffed toy, not for super realism. We wouldn't be able to do a super realism in a, an hour or two of live. It would take many hours of work. Okay, now make sure that everything is well and nicely wrapped. Get back over each and every one of those pieces of masking tape. And see, I know that I will always wrap in the same direction, so that helps me when I check my wrappings. <laughs> yeah, not if he got skunked, huh? But it's not the deer's fault that he got skunked, huh? No, no, I managed to never get skunked. There are sometimes skunks around here. You can smell them. Okay, now let's start wrapping them in clay, in the darker brown. And the good part is that the reindeer antlers are very thick. So it's okay if ours look thick. Maybe I should put on some music. It's so much silence. Can you imagine if the chat would be sound too? You no, know, I'm not going to put on any Christmas music. This is a good thing that I don't have to go out anymore and I don't go out anymore. That's one of the few good things that at this time of year I don't get bombarded with Christmas music. So I can still enjoy it when I play it on Christmas night. No, you can make the antlers, you know, like in peppermint cane color, if you want. As I was saying, you can make your reindeer in all colors. You don't have to make it with realistic colors.
Oh, guys, you crack me up. Okay, make sure that you pack your clay properly, that it doesn't float on top of... Uh, and that's how you will know that you packed your uh, masking tape right, because if you didn't, you'll feel hollow under the clay, like you know, like the clay is on a, a balloon kind of surface. You will learn, the best idea is to just go to the dollar store and grab some cheap masking tape and practice on wrapping masking tape around the wire. That's one of the things that's very important. <laughs> Thank you, Carrie. Okay, my hands are getting a little tired. Okay, it's 1.30 almost. Do you want to do this in two stages and finish it the next Sunday or do you, because it's going to take at least another hour. Now make sure that your antlers are fairly symmetrical. Okay, so Carrie's game. Not about everybody else. Thank you. 
on the bee. And the boo boo. Oops, oops. I mean, the boo boo, I mix the light brown and the dark brown. I am fine. It's I don't want to have a life that would be too long and people would lose interest, you know. But I will have to get up for a few minutes so I can move around because, you know, I get stiff and uh, I start getting painful tingling. I'm going to check on the oven and I'll be back in a couple minutes, okay? Okay, now the antlers go in the oven for 10 minutes, just a pre-bake. And let me show you something in case you want to start um, sculpting little creatures.
you might want to look for glass beads or even uh, semi-precious uh, gemstones. Hi, Lawrence. Because instead of making the eyes or, oh God, I cannot open this jar, or uh, making eyes, you can use little black beads for eyes. God, I, hold on, I need my jar opener. Sorry for that. I have issues opening jars. So uh, that just make sure that they are not plastic, okay? But little black beads work just fine for little creatures' eyes, especially when you make the cutesy kind. Actually, I think I have one little pixie here. Yeah, that's a little pixie that lost a year when I was going to a fair with it. So I would have to fix it to sell it again. But uh, see, this is with black beads eyes. Oh, I'm trying to make the camera focus. There you go. And it lost it again. Let me try again. There we go. So see how you can use black beads for eyes very easily. And that saves you time from making, having to make your eyes But of course, you can make your own out of clay or purchase some already made or paint them. Okay, what are we talking about? What color, what? Okay, I'm trying to catch up on the... chat. Pepe <laughs> Uh Lawrence, after you're done, I am going to, to do it after I do the head. I'm going to actually make him a little harness. Uh, 
Oh, Lawrence has been here for a while. Okay, it's still a little warm, but it's okay. And then bring up my screen so I can make sure that I'm in the. All right. Now let's start building the head. And we go back to the little drawing. So we need to fix the head about here. Oh, yay. Good job. So we are going pretty much here. But yeah, I wanted to show you the whole armature thing, so you know how to do it in case you want to make uh, bigger sculptures than just charm size. Oui, j'ai déjà coupé le fil au début du vidéo. So while the anthers are baking, I'm going to do a little bit of a wrapping here to make sure that my wire doesn't start moving around. Ah, boom. So we are pretty much good. Don't go with the wire all the way to the tip. No, no, I need one more little sheet of aluminum foil, but just a little one. Because we are going to have to fix the anchors here in a bit. Just to give a little bit of strength to this head so it wouldn't crack it's not a big deal here i was expecting it to crack for not packing it right but i guess it didn't so you see no cracks anywhere and then i'm going to place some masking tape on this piece of wire here And I'm going to take one more piece of wire and get it ready for fixing the anthers. That should be done here in a few. I'll just twist it around. Okay, the oven dinged. I'm going to bring them up on a tile so they cool off fast.
All righty. Now I'll have to wait a couple minutes for these antlers to get cool enough to handle. And in the meantime, I have prepared my darker brown in a thin sheet, my lighter brown in a thin sheet, and I'm going to get some white through the pasta machine in a thin sheet, thinner sheet. So I have everything ready, and then I need a little bit of scrap clay, right? Also in a thin sheet. <laughs> you guys are funny. Okay, it's still a little hot. Okay, so right here, okay. I am going to wrap this once. And make it fairly tight. Then this, now, Remember, the, these parts have to go towards the outside. Because see how I made it with this part towards the inside, this branch, and this part towards the outside. So I'm going to place them separately. Just want to make sure that they will not Hold on, let me get first some masking tape. I need a bigger wire. Sorry. So let's first place the wire. Wrap once. Masking tape. But you want your antlers already made and fixed in place because otherwise they would be very hard to hold. And then left white antler. It's okay if they don't stand up right at the start because first you want to fix them in place so they will not move. Now grab again this one and this time bring it over. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. So they should be pretty much like this. Now we are going to fix them in place with the masking tape. Thank <laughs> you. 
is the hardest part in a reindeer, the antlers, honestly. Okay, now let's grab some of the scrap clay and start building the head. Okay, this nose is too long. Okay, no, the nose is still too long. I don't like it. I'm going to cut all this end. all these notifications. What do you want? I so hate self-proclaimed poobahs, you have no idea. Okay. So, this was way too long, so I had to redo it, shorten it a little bit. So, let's re-coat it with scrap clay. And so, I've put, put a little bit of bacon bond on the bottom on the neck so i'm going to wrap it in scrap clay and a lot of times to be very honest the way that i do it okay i first build the armature and then uh, i cover it with scrap clay and then i bake and then once everything is baked and i mean it's covered in scrap clay and baked that is when I start uh, covering with the final details. So if I would want to make a realistic reindeer, I would first do the body in scrap clay, then I would uh, do the antlers, the final antlers, then fix them on the head, cover the head with and the neck with scrap clay, bake, and then go ahead and do everything with the final um color of clay what good what what a bubble head yeah it's not hard to make a bubble head all you need is a spring okay who's leaving cecile bonnie J'espère que tu vas te sentir mieux. 
Cecil has the flu. Uh, it's not at all pleasant. And another uh, tip, let me tell you another tip. When you place the eyes, uh, place the eyes in the scrap clay that you're in the first covering and bake them because that way when you place them and you make the final thing, they will not start moving around and messing you up. So... Let's see, I hope I won't have to make any more of this. So I'm going to place this all the way up to some more of this, unfortunately. Okay, first let's place some white here. Good night, Cecil. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking it doesn't have eyes. I know. Just bear with me a minute. Let's fill this part out. And then here also feather to make the raw clay over the baked clay unnoticeable.
Okay, you'll have to give me just a minute. I need to make more. This brown. Bye, Tina. And see, that's what I was saying when I asked if you're sure you want me to keep going. Because it can get a little tedious after a while of to keep watching this. But we are almost done. Almost. Just need to make a little bit more brown. I know you're still there. I'll be done in a second. an issue here though I need to add more here more clay because it's a little bit crooked almost ready to start working on the eyes. Let's just feather all this area nicely. Get your, the area towards the nose a little bit narrower. Now let's figure out how the eyes are going to be. Let's grab the white and make a snake. Because we want him to be pretty, right? Now we need about these big eyes. So if we want him to be cute, generally uh, a rule of cute is big eyes, always, no matter what you're making. If you're making kittens, dolls, whatever it is, nothing will talk, target the heartstrings better than big eyes. Don't press the eyes to start with. 
first place them so you can figure out if you place them right. Remember the deer have their eyes on the sides of the head. So it should pretty much look like this. And now comes a little bit of more delicate sculpting. Let me bring a strip all the way to the nose, first of all. Now make a few snakes with the brown. You can actually make him different uh, clothing that you can remove, like a little saddle that you could remove and replace if you wanted to. So start building the eyebrow a little bit over the eye. I'm trying to. Like this with snakes. And do the same on both sides. Now, of course, you can bake the eyeballs before inserting. And usually I prefer to do that. But... Uh, Because it's much easier to work if the eyeballs are not soft, too. And then we need two small snakes under the eye. No, I did not find it. Honestly, I did not look a lot for it. I think it might be under this, but it it's a pain to lift this because there's a lot of stuff that's resting on it. Yeah, it's usually Sunday afternoon I clean my work table, so I'll probably find it. It might have fallen under the desk also. But that's going to have, if that's the case, it's going to have to wait until tomorrow. Okay, so this is pretty much how it should look before you start sculpting this area. So once you've placed your snakes, just start feathering the whole thing. I think you noticed that I like using my fingers the most, but of course you can use sculpting tools. not my favorite but some people are able to sculpt with bowl styluses I was never able to do that
Not yet. Talking of scouting, the truth is that the most, uh, the best well paid are art dolls. If you want to actually make a buck or two, but those require the most work and the most talent. I mean, there are art dolls that sell for thousands of dollars. Like usually Nicole West's dolls they can reach 2,500 easily. I've seen some of her dolls selling for over $3,000. And she actually started not, uh, it didn't take her a long time to reach the top. I think only like two or three years she started selling in the top art doll artists because she is exceptionally talented. You can do a search for Nicole West. I think that her, she sells on eBay. I think that her eBay is uh, Jabberwocky something. Her eBay account name okay we need to add a little bit more here because we don't want the eyes to look bulging Yeah, you need to. Her dolls are one of my most favorites of her dolls. There's one she made, I think it was 2013, 12, 13, something like that. It's an ice mermaid. Oh my God, that thing is absolutely out of this world. And her geisha series is fabulous and then she has a cupcake pinups series that's fabulous too Now the eyes is where you have to be the most careful because and that makes or breaks your sculpture in terms of effect. Absolutely. That's a deal breaker. I hope the camera does focus properly.
I told you, Carrie, I saw some of her work selling for over 3,000. And she's got, uh, I think that the first record was one of her butterfly fairies. Oh my God. That thing was absolutely out of this world. And I think it sold for over 28,000, 2,800, but then uh, she had after that, she had some that sold for even more. And she's not even the super realistic kind of artist like those, that Russian artist. She's more of a fantasy sculptor, but her attention to detail is, I mean, the eyes of her dolls and the mouth and everything, they are absolutely unbelievable. Now all you have to do is to smooth nicely all this area because you don't want it to look like a little plastiline model. Now there's two more things we need to do. One is the little circle around the antlers. And the other one is the ears. And I'm going to put two light colored snakes. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do something here. I'm getting some burnt umber. And I'm going to do some very thin snakes here. No, I drew the little skeleton when I started. I only did the... Uh... 
I'll show it to you because it's a lot of stuff on it right now. But remember, I'm essentially a painter, so I have a lot of vision. You know what? Wait. Go to bed. Go to bed. Okay, now let's do the ears. I have some light colored brown and some dark colored brown. I'm going to place the light on top of the... Actually, let me make it in a rectangle. So I made a rectangle with the light colored brown on top of the dark colored brown. Sometimes you see how I'm getting a cut kind of in the middle, but not fully in a diagonal. Now pull the darker brown on top of the lighter brown a little bit. And then cut a circle here and do the same on the other one. Now, the idea here is that we must not make them dog-like. So, no floppy ears, okay? I'm going to need to wipe my fingers. 
I play too much with clay and I have clay residue and they are sticky. What? Oh, <laughs> no. I was telling Whisper because with Whisper it's not hard to get him to be super spoiled. A little bit of extra attention does it. And uh, with him having issues, you know, now he got to be very demanding. And when he wants something, he wants it now, you know. So sometimes I would be paying attention because when it's about going outside with his health issues, I don't want to risk it, you know. But uh, other times it's like, I'm bored, I want to play now. And I'm like, I don't think so, buddy. So generally the deer ears are fairly close to the antler and uh, kind of close to the skull only when they are very paying attention to something they will bring them forward but they are fairly high on the head kind of like the ones of a horse Now there's one more thing we need to do here. I mean, besides the, I'm going to just do it for now because I need to wrap it up soon. I'm going to start being in a lot of pain. But uh, here you do two nostrils. Oops, sorry. And the deer nose is fairly flat. And then let's make a little mouth here. And now we need one more thing. I'll be right back. Mm. I'm going to use burnt amber, not black, because I would have to go all the way to the laundry room to get the black. But do this before baking, because, I mean, you can do it after baking, of course, but if you do it before baking, it will pretty much... Uh, cure on the clay
you can you can work more on the eyes and on the facial expressions but this would be pretty much it let me get it on the side so you can Can you see it well? And of course, make sure that the antlers are properly positioned before you bake and everything is nice and smooth. And then at this point, you can either play some stuff now or bake and then make more stuff for him. And I would honestly place a little bit more meat here because it looks a little bit like the guy in Ice Age without more, uh, it needs more jaw here under the eyes but I'm sorry I just cannot do it anymore I've been here for two and a half hours and it I start hurting too bad but I hope that you got the idea of how to make a sculpture and of course once it's baked you just uh, make a hole here and put one of those uh, eye screws that you can hang after it and you can decorate it with glitter and all kinds of other things but it's a little okay it's a boy deer okay so thank you for being on for the live and uh, we'll have to think what we want to do for next the next one is going to be very close to christmas and uh We'll have to see what we are going to do. So, a slap's forehead about what? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, if there's anything, don't forget, you can contact me here. You can contact me on Facebook and wherever. I will always answer you. Okay? Have a wonderful Sunday, and I hope you'll have fun making your own little reindeer. Happy clean. Bye.